Hi, I'm Tim. Joining me in this video, I'd like to just very briefly discuss a relatively new FAA video. It's about three weeks old on drone traffic management procedures and how the FAA is going about doing this. Let's get to it. The link to this FAA video is um, shown below. It's in the description. It was on the previous slide. It's a YouTube video. It's very easy to get to. It was produced, I think, in the first week of June 2023. And the video is very professionally done by the FAA. It's about a half hour long. And I think it gives anybody looking at it good insight to the depth and breadth of work the FAA is doing on managing drone operations, I'll call it drones in this video, they call it um, unmanned aircraft systems within the national airspace structure. This particular video was of interest to us with the remote ID discussion because it discusses UAS operations and commercial service suppliers under 400 feet AGL in that regime and how the FAA is trying to establish the rules of road for this very new um, form of flight that includes both us flying our drones and RC models, as well as a bevy of new commercial operators that are coming uh, to the fore. And the point that I would like to get across or just discuss with you is there's a lot of emotionalism on the remote ID ruling per the FAA. We don't have to do anything with the remote ID now. This is being filmed in July of 2023. However, in my view, from my study, remote ID is here to stay. So wise people are going to figure out how to adapt that rule. There's no way to make it go away and how to change it as we go along in discussions with the FAA if there are flaws in the original implementation of the remote ID. But again, this video, there is a lot going on behind the scenes because the whole idea of drones, commercial drone activity, it, there, it is a growth industry. There's a lot happening. And because you don't have pilots in the cockpit to implement a see and avoid concept, you just can't write regulations for the new aircraft. The basis for safe operation in the national airspace system is going to be technology. Remote ID is the first step in that journey. And again, just to be clear on this, remote ID has nothing to do with traffic deconfliction. Air traffic control personnel cannot see remote ID. Rather, it's for law enforcement, basically, so that if a drone is flying and somebody wants to determine who that drone pilot is, they can track down that person to take off at landings. I know this causes a lot of angst with people, but that's the basic idea for remote ID. As always, thank you for likes, subscribes, and any Facebook posts. Anything um, you can do favorable to the channel helps out tremendously with YouTube. I greatly appreciate your effort. Also, if you'd like to jump ahead, I've included chapters on all my videos. Just uh, hover over the timeline. You can go to that specific section if you want to see uh, what's going on in the video. One section of the FAA video, which I thought was really quite interesting, they were sp speaking to a young engineer. She's involved in... Um, just as this video focuses on, on drone operations below 400 feet, they're working on unmanned aircraft above 60,000 feet. Now, for those of you that don't fly commercially, air traffic control basically stops at 60,000 feet or flight level 600. Above that is Class E airspace. It's uncontrolled airspace. And there is stuff up there, the Chinese balloon that flew recently, uh, military aircraft, future aircraft that will be supersonic. And what's happening as part of this whole discussion on drones is what do we do for that airspace above 60,000 feet? And what they're exploring is a concept called cooperative separation. There's just rules of the road. They cooperate to separate this traffic because there's not that much traffic above 60,000 feet. Again, all these things are going on in the background with the FAA, nothing to do with us and drones, but just an overall indicator of how much this is um, being part of the discussions in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere with tests, plans, and just thinking ahead for the future. One of the things I have learned as I've done more research on remote ID, and I get a lot of comments from viewers, which I enjoy reading, is there is essentially a, a shock of sorts to the flying community system where we have thousands of pilots being injected 
flying their drones in the national airspace system and they may not even be aware that the FAA exists, let alone that they write regulations and we're supposed to follow the regulations. I've got some background in this. I have been flying um, private aircraft since 1972. Uh, I was a flight instructor for a number of years. <clears throat> I've also flown commercially in the CRJ-7 and the Boeing 777. I flew in the Air Force during my 27-year career in the Air Force, and I've also spent seven years in Washington at the Pentagon. So I have been involved in interagency discussions, just like we're doing with the remote ID for the FAA. And we live in a complex society. The FAA has a ton of things that they're doing in their job between certifying aircraft manufacturers, aircraft control, and just running things for a safe and efficient air operation. And one of the new tasks is drones, unmanned aircraft system. The first shot across the bow of that, if you will, is remote ID. Is remote ID the right answer? Is it the final answer? I, I don't know. But remote ID in some form or fashion is happening. <clears throat> the final rule has been written. There's been a fair amount of research on it. I believe the rule for remote ID will change and adapt over time. If there are flaws in the implementation, that will change. There are some that say it's going to plug into a nationwide tracking system. I, I don't know. Maybe that happens right now. I just don't know, so I can't comment on that. I think there are some useful carve-outs, such as with the FRIA, the FAA Recognized Identification Area. Again, for the nth time, the reason no FRIAs have been approved, this is July 2nd, 2023, is there is an environmental impact that must be done for any federal action that might, approve, uh, might impact the environment. FRIAs fell under that 1970s law for environmental impact. That will expire in mid-July. I think we're going to start seeing FRIA approvals in mid-July. I think FRIAs are an interesting case of a carve-out and exception to the whole remote ID ruling because if you're flying in a FRIA, you do not need any remote ID equipment. How the FRIAs develop, how they adapt, uh, AMA is uh, seeking authority for the AMA on their own to implement FRIAs. Again, this is going to be a constantly evolving, adapting uh, landscape. That's why this video from the FAA is interesting to look at, just the breadth and numbers of people being involved in the technical implementation of drones in the national airspace system that effectively, directly affects us as hobbyists. Again, it's just an editorial comment on my part, but as I study and look at the remote ID situation, I think over time, remote ID is simply going to be part of the landscape for our drone operations. Right now, outside of flying in a FRIA, after September 16th, you have to do something to have remote ID. Now, the manufacturers had to install it on their drones after December 22nd, 2022. That's, that's occurred. So many people, for sure, everybody buying a drone after September 16th, you're going to have remote ID as part of that drone. You will be flying with remote ID. If you accept that drones age out, let's say three years, I'm just picking a date, over a three-year period, as hobbyists purchase new drones, essentially 100% of the drone flyers will be remote ID compliant. That leaves people like me that fly fixed-wing RC, helicopter pilots, with modules. Um, I don't know the future of modules. There is no standalone affordable, which I define as under $50 remote ID module. I believe that will come. As an example, just to, to show you how um, Entrenched, not entrenched, how much remote ID is uh, woven into the fabric of what we're going to be doing. You look at the manufacturers. Spectrum RC Systems are a good company. Spectrum is important for us because they were the ones that invented the 2.4 gigahertz uh, technology in 2004 when that first radio came out. New flyers may not appreciate how important 2.4 gigahertz is. Prior to that, i.e. prior to 2004, when you went to a field, you had to make sure you got a pin to make sure you were the only one on that 72 megahertz frequency. If two people in the same frequency accidentally turned on the transmitters, they would jam each other and countless models were lost to this. Spectrum was the first one to get rid of that whole approach with 2.4 gigahertz technology. It changed everything in the RC modeling um, um, industry for our benefit. 
So the question I've always had is, well, where is Spectrum on Remote ID? It's been awfully quiet over there. And I did some research, and on one of the forums, there was, a, there was an employee of Spectrum. They asked about Spectrum, what are you doing on the Remote ID modules? Where, where are you? And the person replied, yeah, you're right. We can't talk. But I can tell you gloom and doom is inappropriate, and we, Spectrum, are working on new radios, receivers, and such. The company would not be throwing good money away if doom and gloom were appropriate. So I think we're going to see a, a period at some point where when you buy your transmitters, it's just going to have some form of remote ID incorporated in that that will just be part of the landscape for our drone operations. Don't know, but that's where I see it's coming. So I guess my final point is there's a lot of people that are um, upset about the remote ID with the FAA writing regulations, telling them what to do and so forth. Uh, except that um, as a professional pilot, I don't agree with it. I think when regulations are written, um, the safety of the entire air transport system is based on professionals following regulations. But it is in our interest as hobbyists to stay involved in discussions, whether it's with AMA or any other organizations. If you ignore what's going on, you don't have a voice at the table. Rules and conditions are going to be set. It is, as you can see in the video, it's moving along very quickly and it is in our interest to be part of the discussions. Thank you for joining me in this video. Uh, there's a lot more to do with remote ID. The FAA is absolutely involved. I do think it is in our interest to be a participant in these evolving discussions of remote ID because there's a lot more to follow. And um, do take a look at the video. The FAA video is an interesting look at what the FAA thinks is going on with the implementation of drones in the national airspace system. Thank you.